You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Hey there, pet parents. Welcome to the Doggy Dish on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Christy Vaughn, and today's show is super exciting because we have a very special guest with us. I'd like to welcome Amanda from Doggy Dog Madness and also mom to Allie, the blogging boxer. She is going to share some 4th of July safe food tips with us for the upcoming holiday. We'll get down to business right after these messages from our sponsors. We'll be right back, right after these messages. Stay tuned. It's dinner time in America, where more pet parents trust PetSmart for natural and expert recommended foods than any place else. And now, we've added more than 100 new varieties to our already wide selection of your favorite brands, like Simply Nourish, Authority, Wellness, Science Diet, and more. Do what's best for your pet. At PetSmart, happiness in store. Go to PetSmartDeal.com to find out this week's coupon code and save up to 30% on food, treats, toys, and more. And get free shipping on orders of $49. Go to PetSmartDeal.com. P-E-T-S-M-A-R-T-D-E-A-L.com. Pet Life Radio, the number one pet radio network on the planet, joins forces with iHeartRadio to put the power of your pets in your pocket. Awesome. Download the iHeartRadio app and rock Pet Life Radio on your phone, on your tablet, on your Xbox, in your car. Pet talk, pet tunes, and fun pet times. Pet Life Radio and iHeartRadio. Positively possum. Let's talk pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to the Doggy Dish on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Christy Vaughn, and I'm here with Amanda from Doggy Dog Madness, who is going to share some food do's and don'ts with us for the upcoming 4th of July holiday. I first connected with Amanda on Twitter, and I'm so glad I did because her blog is really awesome. She shares all kinds of great tips for dog parents, including cool product reviews straight from her sweet boxer girl, Allie. Now on to the good stuff. Tis the season of grilling and outdoor activities. We all know that there are specific foods that are not safe for your furry kids. But how do you know what is safe and what isn't safe when you're grilling those hamburgers and hot dogs? Amanda's going to share some tips with you so you can enjoy this summer holiday with your pups, but also keep them safe. First, Amanda, I'd love for you to share a little about how you got started with your blog. And of course, we have to hear all about the star of your blog, Miss Allie, the blogging boxer. So welcome, Amanda. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, Christy. I just want to say thank you for having me on the doggy dish. Sure. Well, <laughs> oh, and Allie wanted me to say thank you. Oh, well, tell thank you to Allie because she is awesome. <laughs> we're so we're so thankful for what she does. <laughs> okay, first off, I started blogging about makeup and I actually was blogging for a local company. And then we got Allie, and actually we got her around Thanksgiving. And needless to say, she got some table scraps from some of the family members, and she got sick. And I was trying to find information on how to make her better. And I couldn't find, like, everything I needed in one spot or it wasn't in English that I could understand. So I decided to make a blog about pet health and advice and anything that I come across that I would actually want to know. Well, that's awesome because I totally know what you mean. I've been in similar situations in the past where I've been scouring for information. So I love that you put it all there in one place and easy to read. Thank you. We try. (laughs) (laughs) So tell us a little bit about Allie and how you ended up with her and what she's like. Okay. um, Allie is a female. She's um, a full-breaded boxer. But she actually has her tail in her ear. She's not docked, which is another blog I have up about docking. 
because I wanted to learn, because I didn't know that most boxers have their tails cut until everybody came up to me and was like, is she full bred? And I'm like, yeah, but her tail wasn't docked. So <laughs> she's very unusual with that. But um, we actually got her because she was the runt of the family, and they were actually going to give her to the Humane Society, a family friend. I just was like, no, we want a dog. Let's come over and see her. And I fell in love with her. <laughs> Aww. She's adorable, and I love her to death, and she just loves blogging and taking pictures and playing. Well, I love seeing pictures of her. She is so cute. Now, Amanda, can you share some safe foods with us uh, with the upcoming holidays? Can you share some foods that you put on your site and also that you would recommend for the upcoming 4th of July holiday as we're all outdoors grilling, all kinds of yummy foods? What are safe for dogs? Okay, of course. I'm going to be having a blog up with more foods and obviously the fireworks. But some of the safe foods is probably stuff you're going to have at your party anyway for the 4th. If you're going to have a fruit tray or a veggie tray, you're pretty much, you're golden. Because broccoli, which is one of Allie's favorites in a veggie tray, you can give them broccoli, which is great because it prevents cancer. Cantaloupe, which helps their eyesight and also reduces the cancer. Pineapple. You can give it to them frozen even, like a frozen treat, pineapple, or just fresh. Carrots, which are great for fiber. Asparagus. You might have asparagus at your party, which is great for potassium. Green beans are also a great choice. And obviously, if you're going to have chicken or beef, or even you can even give them salmon if you're going to have salmon at your party. Just make sure nothing is salted, and make sure you don't give them any fatty foods. But... Pretty much any fruits and vegetables you're good with besides grapes and onions. Okay. For fruits and vegetables. Okay. What if I want to sneak a piece of hot dog to my pup? Is no. That okay? <laughs> no. Why is No, why I'm going to smack that, that hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I personally wouldn't want to eat the hot dog, but that is very, it's full of bacteria. It's very dangerous for a dog. It's very fatty. It's just a no no. Okay. Well, what if I can't resist those sweet puppy eyes and I'm grilling my hamburger on the grill? Can I sneak a little piece of cooked hamburger? Is that okay? Well, did you put salt or pepper or any kind of seasoning on it? (laughs) Mm, Maybe. So if it's a plain hamburger, it's okay. Is that right? I would say no to just a sliver if it's not salt and pepper or have any kind of seasoning to it. Okay. So we definitely want to stay away from seasonings, any type of sauces. So if it's plain, maybe plain yeah. chicken breast on the grill would be a good idea. Just a little piece of chicken, that would be okay, or some salmon. So if you're having a full cookout and you have lots of options, then you can definitely find something for your pup. That's good to yes. know. <laughs> yeah, plus you can also do like corn on the cob, but just do not give them on the cob. Cut the corn off. That's a- that's they a great idea. Whether salted or buttered. Yeah. I mean, most of these you're going to already have at your party, so you don't have to worry. Good idea. I like that. I, I love corn. I know everyone out there will probably be grabbing their corn on the cob. They'll be grilling. So that is a great idea. Good. Well, what specific 4th of July favorites should we stay away from? What are some things that we typically have at our parties that we probably don't want to give our dog? We talked about hot dogs and hamburgers. What about some side items? Okay. Some unsafe stuff that you might have at your party that you do not want to give your dog is, like I said, anything salty, anything fatty, stay away from it. You don't want anything that has anything salted, seasoning, Do not give that to your dog. Obviously, no onion and garlic. Grapes and raisins, no, obviously not because of kidney failure to your dog. And I know we talked about chicken, but if you have anything that's a poultry on a bone, make sure you take the meat off the bone because they could choke. It might obstruct their system, so make sure no bones involved. Also, anything sugary. We're going to have tons of desserts at this party, probably, and anything sugary. Make sure you don't give anything sugar to your dogs. It can cause many problems, like diabetic, and obviously it's bad for them. Chocolate, which could kind of be included with sugar, but chocolate, they could vomit. They can have seizures and tremors. And at these parties, it's probably going to be alcohol. So make sure your dog does not get anything alcoholic. 
it has the same effect on dogs, but with less in their system. It can also cause diarrhea and, like I said, vomiting and avocado. We love avocado. And it's probably going to be at the fourth, but that's very high in fat and they cannot have it. And you might have peaches. I forgot to name that. If you have any peaches or plums at your party, do not give that to your dog because the seeds are poisonous. And I would say also to stay away from the hot dogs and the steaks. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know everyone loves steaks, right? Especially dogs. So I'm sure they'll be drooling as you're grilling up those steaks. <laughs> And then you say, no, you want this chicken. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> and no guacamole, that's for sure. Well, Amanda, what is the best way, in your opinion, to avoid your pups accidentally getting those table scraps during the holidays? You know, everyone's busy. Everyone's chatting, having a great time. How do you avoid them accidentally getting some table scraps? What can you do about that? Yeah. Yes. Even the most disciplined, well-behaved dogs can get table scraps. Like I said, Allie recently got some for Thanksgiving. I don't know if a guest gave a tour, it fell on the floor, or, you know, what. But what you could probably do to help that situation would be, I would say, to give them the food that I named so that they're already full and not craving anything that's fatty or something they don't want. So I would make sure if they want something, then give them something that they can have, or I would just make sure you give them attention. And I would also tell your guests, do not feed your dog unless you want to go into specifics on what they can and cannot give your dog. But I don't know if there's anything you can really do to stop a determined pup. <laughs> Especially a counter surfer like my Sadie. <laughs> she likes to get <laughs> up on the counter with her big paws. She likes to try and clear the dining room table for me. Yeah, Allie she does up, but she doesn't really try anything. She doesn't try to grab anything yet. Well, Allie is a good girl. My Sadie is not. I know that's what she's saying to me, but I don't know if I believe it. <laughs> Maybe she's just extra sneaky. <laughs> yep, she's still not. Mom doesn't look. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sadie definitely, she waits until I turn my back. She's very smart, but she's also very sneaky as well. So she that's likes how to... It is. Yeah, she likes to help out when she can. She says, Mom, I'm just helping out clearing the table. Don't worry about me. Well, I think it's a really great idea to kind of prep your guests a little bit, especially those who may not have dogs, because they may think it's cute to give a begging dog a little bit of hamburger or hot dog or maybe some of their bun or some potato salad. Or, or even onion beans. or something, yes. Exactly. Something that would really harm them, not just upset their tummies. So I think it's a great idea that you mentioned to prep them a little bit. Uh, you may mm -hmm. not want to have a list <laughs> or yeah. uh, something just posted. Say, don't, but... just please don't feed my dog, yeah. Right. And, and some people think that it's funny or it's cuter. They just don't know mm -hmm. any better. And it really can be harmful. So I think it's great to make people aware. And hopefully those who are listening will know this before they go to their 4th of July parties. And they'll be a little bit more careful and maybe ask their host or the owner of the dog to provide something for them that they can feed the dog if they really want to. So I think that that's a great idea to mention that. Now, what do you think is the biggest mistake people make with holiday foods and their pups? What is the biggest mistake that, that you've heard about or maybe you've actually made yourself that people make with holiday foods? There's obviously poisonous food and it could cause dangerous and very life-threatening and it could upset your dog's stomach. Now, my personal experience was my Allie got a hold of fatty food and her body was not adapted to it yet. She never had it before and she actually got sick and had the whole, you know, diarrhea. She wouldn't eat. So I had to go into the bland diet and that's why I actually wrote about it. So mm -hmm. I could tell people, you know, give your dog rice and boiled chicken or boiled beef mm -hmm. or noodles. You can even use spaghetti noodles. But yeah, it can be very dangerous and it's not something to think lightly about especially since they're like our kids. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we want to keep them safe and make sure they don't get sick, for sure. Now tell us a little bit about Allie's favorite treats she enjoys at home. Some of her treats um, she enjoys at home that are natural, that I kind of named. She loves broccoli. She loves oranges, which is kind of what made me start looking into what's healthy for dogs. Because I didn't know <laughs> dogs liked vegetables, 
So I really think it's key to start young, but she loves oranges, broccoli, chicken, of course. She also loves asparagus and carrots. I mean, there's a lot of things to name, but for that, natural stuff, that's what she likes. As for treats, please, she will like some positively wholesome treats that may be coming our way. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming their way. <laughs> she'll get them soon. So she'll be trying those out, which are all natural. And those are great to give out at a party as well. You could give your guests some to give to her. Um, then they can have some fun feeding her. And you know what she, she also loves eggs. I shouldn't mention that. She loves eggs. You know, our dogs do too. They love eggs. And you could feed them a hard-boiled egg, maybe chop it up on top of their own food, or just mm-hmm. give them little pieces of a hard-boiled egg or scrambled egg without any butter or oil, of course. But yeah, eggs are really good. It's a great source of protein for dogs. They even say you could give them a shell, but I'm not really <laughs> keen on that. You know, I mentioned something about that on one of our previous shows, that some recipes for dog treats actually call for the entire egg. And yeah, because it's very good for them. Right, right. But I stay away from that just because the eggshell mm-hmm. can contain bacteria. So I'm really yes. cautious about that. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because some people don't realize that the whole egg could be harmful. So we're just talking yeah, about, I'm really the iffy about it. Yeah. Me too. Me too. All right. Well, it is time for us to take a quick break. So we'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Sit, stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Dogs leave fur wherever they go. It collects all over the home. There are many tools designed to stop dog hair spreading, but their effectiveness varies, and afterwards you have to clean the tool, then the floor. With the Dyson Groom Tool, you simply deploy the bristles, then gently brush the coat. Loose fur is removed, while dead skin and allergens are captured by the vacuum. And to clean up, you simply release the trigger. To get this awesome Dyson Groom Tool, go to DysonDeals.com. That's DysonDeals.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Werber, host of Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff here on Pet Life Radio. Please join us at our new time on Sundays at 9 a.m. Pacific Time and noon Eastern Time when we get callers who call in a question about their pet or email me a question that I read live on air. Kong is going to send out a free Kong toy. So you get free advice, lots of information, and a ProSense and or a Kong toy just for calling in here to Ask the Vets with Dr. Jeff on Pet Life Radio. That is a great deal. We want you to take advantage of me because that's why I'm here. Every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to the Doggy Dish on Pet Life Radio. I'm here with blogger and dog mom Amanda from Doggy Dog Madness, and she just shared some awesome tips for the upcoming 4th of July holiday. Now, we all know that table scraps are not okay for our furry kids, but how do you determine what is and isn't safe, especially when you have drooling dogs hanging out at your feet while you're grueling? So what can you do to satisfy your pups and keep them happy during the holidays? I think the best thing you can do is to make your own simple but yummy healthy treats for them to enjoy while you're chowing down on your own delicious people food. We can't leave them out, especially during the holidays, right? So I'd like to share an easy chicken jerky recipe with you. And as a side note, if you plan on making your own dog treats, it's a good idea to invest in a food dehydrator. You should find a fairly inexpensive one online, and these are wonderful for making your own jerky. Now, you may ask why you should make your own jerky. Well, because it's much better than buying it from the store and not knowing exactly what's in it or where it's made. Okay, so back to the recipe. Now, all you need for this recipe is chicken. That's it, just plain chicken breasts. You don't need any spices or sauces for this super healthy and delicious treat. Now, if you don't have a dehydrator, but you still want to make your own jerky, you're in luck. 
if you have an oven, you can make jerky. So all you're going to do is preheat your oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and then lightly coat your baking sheet with nonstick spray or my personal favorite, coconut oil. And now there's actually a a nonstick spray out there made with coconut oil. And I just saw it the other day at the grocery store. So check it out next time you're shopping. It's super healthy and it's really easy to use. Now next, you'll want to rinse off the chicken breast and remove any fat. You'll slice the chicken with the grain, which will help make the jerky even chewier for your dog. These slices should be very thin, about one-eighth to a quarter inch in thickness. Place the strips on the baking sheet and then bake for approximately two hours. You'll remove them from the oven and then cool on a wire rack until they're completely cool. Then once they're cool, you'll cut the strips into bite-sized pieces and then serve. Now, if you've never made jerky before, your jerky treats should be firm and dry, not at all soft or spongy. Just remember, it is safer to go a little extra dry and firm than for the meat to be undercooked. Now, a little tip for cutting them, it's really easy to use a pizza cutter to cut them instead of a knife. Don't want to cut yourself either, so stick with the pizza cutter. Now, some tips for storing these treats. If you happen to have any leftovers, which you probably won't, you'll want to store them properly. And you can store them in the refrigerator for about three weeks, or you can freeze any remainder for about eight months. Now remember, since this jerky doesn't contain any preservatives, it won't last as long as regular store-bought jerky. So you will want to refrigerate or freeze. You can also experiment with different meats if your dog doesn't like chicken or has an allergy. Now, Amanda, have you ever made jerky for Allie? No, but I am very intrigued. (laughs) (laughs) And you see how easy it is to make. It is, apparently. Well, does she like chicken? Of course she does. She's drooling in the background. (laughs) What about other meats? Have you ever experimented with giving her some other meats? Um, As a jerky or as anything. Or just as anything. She's had a little bit of beef and she's had duck. I think lamb, I want to say. That's it. Okay. Well, just know that you can experiment with different types of meat with the jerky, and it's so easy to make. And then you have peace of mind knowing that you've made it, and there's nothing scary in it because we've all heard about the jerky Mm -hmm. crisis out there from the jerky coming from China and how so many dogs are getting sick. So it's really a great idea, especially during these holidays, to have something easy on hand that you can share with your dogs so they avoid getting sick from something that you're serving at your party. Amanda, what about frozen treats? I know we've talked about frozen treats on some of my other shows. Have you tried any frozen treats to help keep Allie cool and hydrated during the warm months? Yes, she has. She has tried two of your frozen ideas. One was the banana, that you cut the banana and put peanut butter on top and freeze it. She loves banana and she loves peanut butter and she was obsessed with it. So you get a treat and it hydrates them and it's like a new texture also. I want to, instead of just drop they're used to, it's a new texture for them and they love that. I also have tried your... Great idea. I love this. You put a vegetable in your ice tray with water. I put carrots in the ice tray, and it's a frozen treat they can have in the summer. It cools them down, and it's also good for them. And what I love is Allie plays with it, and then she eats it. So (laughs) she keeps them busy. It's a healthy treat. Oh, that's great. um, I'm so glad she loved it. The yogurt strawberry ones, I still have to try, but I am going to try the yogurt strawberry frozen recipe. Oh, great. Yes, those are a huge hit at my house. They're so easy to make. If you have strawberries or any other safe fruits on hand, plus yogurt, plain non-fat yogurt, which I like to use Greek yogurt because it's a little bit thicker. Mm -hmm. When you try it for Allie, 
try to get the plain Greek yogurt and it's really easy to spread onto the piece of strawberry and then just freeze it for a couple of hours. It's really easy and they love it. It's almost like a frozen yogurt, like a fro-yo treat for dogs, but it's <laughs> so healthy. And I can't believe, you know, not everyone does it because it's just the easiest thing. It doesn't take any time at all. And they think they're getting something really special. <laughs> what I loved about these, these were all easy and she loved them and I made them and I know what's in them mm -hmm. and there's nothing bad. And what I think is great is the fact that you can even do this for the fourth. I mean, you probably have most of these items so you can ha give this to your dog for a little dessert on the fourth when you guys are having your cake or chocolate. Absolutely. And that way they won't feel left out because I like to include yeah. my dogs in everything we do. So that way they feel like they're getting something extra special and sweet because I really do think that dogs can determine flavors. I think they mm -hmm. know the difference between savory and sweet. And so when we're having our dessert, I think they should have dessert too. Yeah, they don't want to be jealous. <laughs> no, no, no. And you can make something very patriotic out of these treats as well to go along with the rest of your treats and your own human and people food. You can make the yogurt covered strawberries into you know red and white, and you could even do the same with blueberries to add oh, in that's the a blue. Great idea. So that way you don't have to interrupt your decor for the Fourth of July. You can have <laughs> the special doggy treats out, and I bet you anything that people will try them as well because they are tasty. So everything we talk about, humans can try as well. It's all human grade. There's, there's nothing in it that humans can't have because that's the whole point. We want to make sure that our dogs are eating healthy just like us. All right. So Amanda, tell us, are there any special events or upcoming posts that you'd like to share with us? On Doggy Dog Madness, we're going to be having, obviously, how to keep your dog safe and calm for the 4th of July, which will include some of these foods that we're talking about. And I'm going to have some pictures of her eating some of the frozen treats, so you can check that out. And also, I'm going to be having a post on Positively Wholesome, because we're going to be getting some of her lovely treats. Those are some blogs coming up if you want to come. And plus, we're going to have, like, a summer how to keep your dog cool and safe in the summer. Oh, great. Well, I can't wait to check those out. And we will share a link to your blog on the show's page so all of our listeners can check it out. We will also share pictures of Allie on the show's Facebook page. I know she is going to be a huge hit because she is adorable. And everyone <laughs> out there just has to see this cutie. She is so adorable. Oh, thank you. And I know you're very active on social media, so share with us exactly how everyone can find and follow you and Allie. Okay, you can follow and find me and Allie on our website. It's doggydogmadness.blogspot.com, and we have all those blogs on there. Also, on Twitter, you can bark at us at Doggy Madness. I'm, like she said, very active on Twitter. We like to share pictures, hear stories. I love talking to other dog owners, so bark on by. <laughs> <laughs> we will, definitely. And I wanted to mention a special from Positively Wholesome for the 4th of July. We are offering free shipping the entire day on 4th of July. And just use the code free ship 4th on the website when you check out and you will get your free shipping. All right, well, we are out of time, and we would like to thank Amanda for joining us today and our producers for making this show possible. I love to hear from my listeners, so please send your comments and questions to Christy at PetLifeRadio.com, and that's Christy with an I. You can also find The Doggy Dish on Facebook, Twitter, and we're now on Instagram. So exciting. So follow us at Doggy Dish Radio. I post all of the recipes mentioned on the show, so feel free to download and follow along. Thank you for listening to The Doggy Dish. Bye-bye for now. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.